Hey there, I'm Dave, the Notion Coach, and in this video, we're taking a look at one of Notion's several new updates over the past couple weeks. In this case, we're looking at progress bars. This is a an addition to the numbers property, but there's also some added functionality that we can get when you're tracking your progress on things like goals or projects. We're gonna get into the basics of how the progress bar works and a very specific use case that I've been working through, how to track your progress on existing goals and some workarounds to get the most out of the progress bar and visualize where you are in terms of tracking goals or projects. So we've got this example that we're looking at and then we're gonna kind of build this from scratch just to see how it works. But in this example, we're tracking goals and we have two number properties. We have the current value, where you are at today and the target number where you want to be within a certain timeline and this last property which is a progress formula to dive into what's going on here this is a simple formula just to divide the current number by the target number and then add a calculation just so that you're getting a percentage and you can round that number so that it's easier to review. So we're going to build that next. In this case, if we go into edit property, we'll see here that we've got the number format is a percentage, but we have these new functionalities here. So the standard, which is what we've been using up to up to this update is the number, but we have two new additions, the bar, which gives you a linear progress bar as well as the ring, which if you have an Apple Watch and you're tracking your activity, it's very similar to that. Some other customizations that you can make are changing the color. It's pretty much limited so that anything within that property has to be the same color. It's maybe something that they update over time in terms of if you're past, say, 75%, maybe we can change the color or have some more customizations available there. And then also, if you want to show the number versus just seeing that progress bar or the ring. If you have a dashboard and you have a lot of information, you might not want to see the number, but you just want to see the basics of where you are visually versus expanding on it elsewhere. So what we're going to do now is build this from scratch step by step and then get into an advanced use case of goals where you might not be starting at zero and you actually have three numbers to track in terms of your starting number, your current and your target and some workarounds to make the progress bar work in that scenario. So we've got the starting point and we have three example goals here and we have these number properties. We have a current number and a target. What we want to do is add a formula so that we could round that number and end up with a percentage that then we could apply the progress bar or the ring. We're going to click on this plus button here and we're going to call this progress bar and we're going to change this from text to a formula. From here, this also simplifies the formula process. So up to now, creating a progress bar was pretty complicated in terms of adding emojis or adding characters to do it manually. So this will definitely simplify that process. But what we want to do is write in this formula, we're going to first round and we're going to round specifically the property current in parentheses. And we're going to divide this by the property target. And then we're going to multiply this by 100 and divide that by 100 so that we get a decimal place. So we've got a decimal and we want to turn this into a percentage. I'm going to go into the property name, click edit property, and then turn this into a percentage. And now that we've got the percentages, they're rounded to the whole number. From here, we want to select a bar, change the color. So we want to make these red or ring, so we'll leave it at bar and then you can also turn off the number here. So you get a full, more minimal progress bar here. And now we have this working for any, any information that you're tracking. So for example, with goals, if you're tracking by number, or we can set this up for things like if you're completing tasks toward a project, there's ways to bring in that data using simple formulas there. But that's just a quick overview of how the new progress bar works. What I want to get into next is a case that I've been working through specifically when you're tracking, in this case, key results, but you're not starting at zero. So things like tracking number of followers or number of 
posts on a particular. This is probably a common use case where if we're setting goals for a lot of metrics, you're not starting at zero. You're starting at an existing number and you're trying to work your way through a target number. So we're looking at a key results database just to give some context out as to what's being tracked here. These key results are assigned to a particular quarter. There's a starting value, a current value, and a target. And then this progress bar, as I mentioned earlier, a lot more complicated. You had to add your own custom characters and all that. So don't have to do that anymore with these updates. And then of the type of key results, so getting a little bit deeper into tracking your goal metrics, deciding or defining between an output outcome or inputs. Outcomes are results from your work. Output is things that you're producing. And then input is things like tracking the time toward a particular action or building a habit. So if you're interested in this, Ali Abdal had a really really interesting email newsletter that went into this philosophy a bit more so super interesting there but the key challenge here is when we have three values this kind of breaks the progress bar so for example if i get past my goal and i publish you know 30 instagram posts you can see here this breaks progress bar is not really functional anymore so the same thing happens with the new progress bars where everything is under a factor of 100 or a factor of a final number. This is what we're going to kind of tackle next. I'm going to go into one of these key results because we want to set up a couple additional formulas to get adjusted numbers so that we can get this new progress bar to work. If I go into this key result, I'm going to scroll down a little bit. This is just going to give some context as to what we're tracking in terms of numbers. Let's hide some of this so that we see less. And then just for context, if you're if you have several key results and you want to kind of distinguish between them, having a color coding system where you could say purple is content related, yellow is you know templates or community related, whatever categories you're tracking helps organize your information a little bit more. But we want to create a new property. So what I want to do is get adjusted numbers so that we start from zero and have our target number and adjust the existing numbers that we have. Let's get into what that means. So we're gonna create a new property called adjusted current. We're gonna make this a formula. And we're gonna have adjusted target. Here, okay, so we got two formulas here and we were gonna set this up next. So if we, in this case, at the start of the quarter, started with this value 24,300, and the target's 50,000. We want to adjust these so that the start is zero and the target is whatever that number is minus this 24,000 number. So for setting up the adjusted current, I'm gonna open this up here and then we're going to say prop current minus prop start. Gives us, so that gives us 8,800. So this is the number of new followers from the start of the quarter if we were starting from zero. So the second part of this is setting the adjusted target. So instead of 50,000, we're going to say prop target minus prop, and then in quotations, start. So that actually, if we were starting from zero, the goal is 25,700. So these adjusted numbers allow us to take advantage of this new progress bar, even though you have a starting number that's not zero. So the last section here, we're gonna create one last formula, and this is going to be setting up the, prog the new progress bar. So we're gonna call this progress bar. And we're going to use the same formula that we used prior. The only difference is we're going to use these adjusted numbers. We're going to round and then select the property adjusted current divided by prop adjusted target. And then we're going to do the same addition where we're turning this into a, we're rounding to be able to turn into a percentage. 
So we're going to multiply by 100 and then divide by 100. And let's see what that gives us here. So we've got 0.34. This is our progress in a decimal. And then I want to change this to a percentage. So we're going to go to edit property. We're going to turn this into a percent value from a number value. And we want to set this up as a progress bar. So we're going to select the color again. We can either show the number or hide it. And in this case, we've got our progress bar even if we have that start current target, which is pretty consistent with setting up OKRs or goal metrics where you're going to have a lot of scenarios where you don't start at zero. And rather than doing the math manually, you can get these adjusted values to get ahead of that and automate that a little bit more. So if we go back into the key results page, now let's get rid of this old progress bar and turn on a new progress bar. And we're going to move this over to this part of the space. And now we've got our new progress bars, a lot cleaner, a lot more minimal, and hopefully over the next few updates and as this is more in use, we'll get some more customizations in terms of additional color control or ways that we could show this information. But in the meantime, this is a huge update, one of many over the last couple days. So anyway, that's just an overview of how this new progress bar works. Again, whether you're using this to track a goal metrics or project progress, definitely worth using and as a way to visualize where you are across multiple projects or across multiple goals. These types of visuals go a long way to define what areas are you crushing it versus a little bit behind. So using this information to drive your decision making could be a pretty powerful practice. So let me know what you think about the new progress bar. Are you, are you planning on using it? Have you tried to implement it? And how's that process going? And you know, let me know what those questions are in the comments. In the meantime, I'm going to be covering some of the other recent updates from Notion over the next couple of videos. And if you want to keep in touch with this type of content, Definitely would appreciate you subscribing. Hope that's helpful. See you in the next video.